Hello everyone, welcome to my farmhouse sewing room. I'm Marne and today I have some great things that I want to share with you. First of all, I want to tell you about this fabric store that I went to yesterday. Um, yesterday was a sewing day for me and I was in here sewing with my friend Emma and we were creating and by two o'clock we got finished and we got talking about quilt shops and I'm like, I heard about this new quilt shop by my other friend Brenda. Um, it was called Sheets and it's in Pennsylvania. And um, I said, you wanna go check it out? And she's like, yeah, oh my God, you have got to check out this quilt shop. It is amazing. It is probably one of the most beautiful and jam packed little quilt shops that I've ever been to. So the name of this quilt shop is called Sheets So Creative. Um, I have their, their business card here and they have a website. And I told um, Erin, she's the owner, that I would definitely give her a shout out of her quilt shop because you have to check this place out. They have a website and you can order online. And I've also talked to her about doing a video tour in her in her shop. So I would really like to do that. And um, hopefully we'll have more details coming up on that. I got to take Jim, my husband over to meet this couple because her and her husband, they're like a team. Um, their names are Aaron and Todd. They're they're awesome. I had great conversation. I didn't even look around in her, in her shop yesterday like I wanted to because uh, we got talking and, and I'm going to tell you a funny story. I walked in, you know, and um, she had another customer in there and she, she saw me and she's like, you look very familiar. She said, I think I know you. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe Jelly Beans restaurant, you know, where I worked. And she's like, no, she didn't know where Jelly Beans was. And I was like, oh, it's in Painted Post, you know, and uh, she's like, no, that's not it. So I'm kind of walking around in, in her shop and I think my mouth must have been hanging open and I'm drooling at all the fabric. I have never seen so many wide back choices for quilts. So if you're a quilter, this is a great shop to check out. I mean, she has got, an, I can't even count the array of wide backs that she has from batiks into all these other beautiful colors and prints. I mean, it's just amazing. So I'll give you her um, her web address, but back to my story. So I'm, I'm in there and we're walking around and I come back up around her counter and she's like, I know where you're, I know where I saw you. She says, you're on YouTube. And I'm like, huh? I was kind of like humbled, you know, I'm like, wow. So, um, uh, I asked her, um, where, how did you find me? And she said that she saw my sewing room tour and I'm like, that's awesome. I guess she thought I was further away. She had no idea that I, I was close, you know, and I was telling her about her little shop that my friend Brenda told me about her shop and we just come there yesterday on a whim, you know, and I'm so glad I did. So I'm going to give you their website. It is S-C-H-E-E-T-Z, so creative, S-E-W-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E dot com. So it's sheets, so creative dot com. Check out her, her website and her store. The amazing things that she has in that store are just I can't, I, they're mouth watering, jaw dropping. I can't even describe it, but they are great people. I had great conversation with her yesterday and I didn't even get a chance to really look around her store and probably it was a good thing I didn't because it's dangerous. Me and quilt shops, we're dangerous together. So anyway, um, we're walking around and she had these awesome little placemats that were, you know, like samples in her shop. And I was like, and the first thing I noticed was this milk can fabric. And I'm like, oh my God, I was like, where's that milk can fabric? And she went and picked it right out for me. She's like, do you want the panel too? And then she's showing me the pot holders and the wall hangings and everything. And I'm like, oh my God, check out this panel I've got hanging here. This is what I got at her shop. And it has the chicken, um, a Holstein cow, a pig, um, this little Jersey cow. I have this exact picture in my bathroom downstairs. Really cool. A goat. I'm a sucker for goats. Um, another cow with its tongue out. Um, the barn and tractor. The, a barn with like a little green halo. A milk can. It looked like a little Jersey calf. Another Holstein. Um, a barn with a wagon. Another little cow. Milk can. And another cow with a little halo. A little daisy halo on its head. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm in love. I am absolutely in love. So she gave me some patterns and these were free patterns from her shop. And these are the pot holders. And you can take these panels and you can make them into cute little eight inch pot holders out of one of these squares. And you could put the milk can, you know, on the back or you could use flowers or whatever you want to match. I thought it was great. 
And then she had these placemats, and I really want to make these for my table, but I have, a, I have a table for six, and so I'll have to make six of these and use six of the panels. But she's got the picture here, and they've got the one of they've got four cows all framed out, and then they have the milk can beside it out of this milk can fabric. And this milk can design is a free pattern, and you can find this on Moda moda.com under moda fabrics and another one that she had was a wall hanging that was made out of those um those little panels up here so they have the two milk cans with the farmhouse in the middle and there is a farmhouse on here or no there's not a farmhouse oh i guess it's the barn here with the wagon um i'm thinking of another thing that i saw with um farmhouses actually i saw a cute little pattern i wanted to buy and i didn't buy it and i thought i'm gonna go back there again but she had like a little farmhouse pattern with like little clotheslines and stuff that you could make into a quilt. And I'm like, oh, I've got so many quilts that I want to make. It ain't even funny. And I don't even know how to, um, <laughs> or where I'm going to find time because I'm so backed up with other things. So this is a great little quilt shop. This is what I bought. I bought this panel and there is, uh, eight, 12, 12 blocks on here. Uh, I really need to press it. Um, I love this milk can fabric and I want to do the milk can design. But like I said, you can find um, the milk can pattern to make the milk cans on moda.com. They have a free pattern on there. And she gave me these, Erin gave me these patterns for free. It was great. So um, the next thing I want to tell you about from this quilt shop, she gave, she gave me one of these rulers to try out. And this is, this is something new that I haven't heard of. Um, I think I've told you in previous videos, I'm a huge fan of creative grids because they're non-slip rulers. This, I have to say, has got creative grids <laughs> kind of beat. I mean, for me, because being single-handed, I like things that will hold still, you know, and I can put a weight on it, and I can draw lines and stuff. And actually, this is a perfect size ruler. But this is made by Quilter Select. And she gave me a creative grids, you know, on a piece of fabric, and it kind of slid a little bit. And then she had me put this one down, and this one didn't slide at all. So I'm like, ooh, this might be my new favorite. So if you want to check these out, she has amazing selection of different types of rulers she also has the creative grids but she also has a ton of these um quilter select rulers so you might want to check those out on on the websites um sheets so creative.com she's got notions threads um the embroidery threads um oh, i forget what you call those um for floss tube or whatever. I don't do that kind of thing, but she's got an amazing array. I, I can't even describe because I really didn't look into her store all that much. I just know that they're doing a lot of things in there and her husband has been uh, designing a room for a long arm and they're gonna do lessons and they're gonna have classes. And I'm thinking they really got something going on. But this but this um, little shop was um, used to be an old Grange. So it's really cool, and I'm definitely going to do a video tour on her on her um, quilt shop. That'll be an, an upcoming thing. So um, while I was in there before I left, of course I had to buy another bottle of Best Press because I use this a lot when I'm when I'm pressing and sewing. And so I was going to go to the sew what shop nearby, but I figured while I'm there I was going to get that. And then um, there was a panel um, that I have, and it is, it's called She Who Sews, and it looks like a mechanical girl on a bicycle. And I've got all the fabrics and ready to start because I want to make myself a sewing quilt. And I haven't even got it started yet. And I'm kind of like, with this big panel, I'm not sure how to go about it yet. So I haven't really thought up the design too much. But um, she had these charm packs of that went with the She Who Sews. And I have some of the fabrics that I'm going to frame around my my uh, panel and stuff but these charm packs have a lot of different designs on them that um i thought would be really cool to incorporate in that quilt that i want to do so um i bought two of these and i think these were the last two that she had so i was really uh lucky to to find those so i i'm really excited i'm really excited about this this shop um i really want to do an upcoming um tour of her shop I told her I would give her a shout out here um because I think it's great and if you're looking for a new place to shop you know and if you can shop online and have something shipped to your door it's great you know and you can do it without even your husband knowing that you, you bought more fabric you know and, and I am I am totally a fabric junkie I mean I, I am no shortage of fabric but it's an addiction it's a passion and it's an obsession and I can't wait to get started on some of these. It's like everything else that I have here in my sewing room that I want to get going. So today I'm going to be sewing. And I do want to show you what I've been working on. I, uh, 
created some cute little pot holders. Um, these were out of my Lori Holt uh, book. They were they um, you could make them in six inch or twelve inch blocks. I made two of them, and on one of them. I stitched farmhouse on the fork. I was gonna do it on both of them, but my machine messed up and I had to tear it all back out. And I'm thinking, I'm overthinking this. Don't get too fancy, Marnay, because you know, they're just gonna be pot holders, but they're really cute. And these will be on my Etsy store. Um, I will we'll try to get them uploaded soon. So if you see this video, kind of keep your eye out for them. Um, another thing I'm going to work on today is my stepmom Bonnie's birthday. Happy birthday, Bonnie, I love you. Um, my sister wanted me to make her a grocery tote, so I'm going to work on this today, and maybe I'll take you along on this journey if you want to stick around and watch. This is a really simple bag. Um, here in New York, we have to have our own bags, so um, grocery totes are great. I'm going to do a red liner in it. Um, just going to be really simple, but this is a farmy kind of fabric, and I've already made myself um, a grocery tote out of the same fabric um, a few years back, and I had some left over, and I knew I had enough left over to make one more tote. So I'm gonna make it for my stepmom today for her birthday. And I'm also gonna go see my Aunt Sally um, tomorrow. And uh, at Christmas time, I wanted to make, well, I wanted to send her um, a little goodie pouch of fabrics and thread. I have her a little bag here. I sent it to her and I sent it to the wrong address. But anyway, it's a little fat quarter with some sewing notions on it. And I thought maybe I would make her a tissue box cover and take it up to her. So I'm going to make a tissue box cover today out of this and um, have that for her sewing room. And I also had a couple other little things here. My Aunt Sally married me and my husband last year, July 24th, which we have our upcoming first anniversary. But I got her this little tin too. It's for prayer notes and it says give it to God. And when you open it up, if I can open it... Um, it the right way. It has this little pen and paper in it so you can kind of write your troubles on a little piece of paper and give it to God. And um, in the side the prayer box it says God is within her she will not fall. Psalms 46 5. And I just thought this was a really um, cool thing to give to my Aunt Sally for a special gift. Since I didn't get it to her for Christmas um, I also found her these cute little um, nail files that have like sewing things on it and I got her a nice spool of thread so um like I said I tried to mail these at Christmas time and you know life is busy and we get caught up in things and I thought I'll just take it up to her um when I go up to see her so I'm going up tomorrow to see her and I'm going to make her a tissue box cover today too so and if you haven't seen my tissue box tutorial um I have a video on that so if you want to watch that it's great tissue boxes are Covers are great for boxes. You know, when you have a tissue box in your house, it's better than a plain old tissue box and you can make it customized to match any room in your house. So I'm gonna get started on this, but please check out Sheets So Creative. And Sheets is spelled S-C-H-E-E-T-Z. So Creative, S-E-W. So Creative, like you're gonna sell. Um, great little shop. They are located in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania on Round Top Road. Um, she has an amazing, amazing website. Check out all the stuff that she has. But um, stay tuned. If you're a subscriber, I am going to get a video tour of her shop because it is the best little quilt shop I've ever been to. So I'm going to get started on my grocery tote. So if you want to watch, stick around. Okay, everybody. Um, I want to show you how I'm going to do this. Um grocery tote. So I've got my pieces already cut and I measured it 20 and a half inches wide by 18 inches tall. So this is the outside of my bag. The inside of my bag I said I was going to do in this red and I have this red fabric and I measured it 18 inches tall by 20 and a half inches wide as well. So what I did with this um, fabric is I put some um, Bedding. I have leftover bedding from my quilting, so I just took out some scraps I had in my closet and I measured them to cut. And I I measured it a half inch smaller than my 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 pieces that I cut. So my bedding uh, would have been 17 and a half by 20. And what I did, I just measured two inches apart. I took my uh, straight ruler and I just measured it every two inches and drawed a line with my chalk pencil. And then I just ran a, a stitch 
um, and some variegated red thread up through just to quilt my batting to the inside of my bag. So, and I've already marked out my corner squares. So I'm going to cut out four inches on the squares on each corner to make my bottom. So, um, I've already got these two pieces already batted and um, stitched down in some rows two inches apart, just like I said. And now I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm going to show you how I measure out the corners on my, let's see if I can make sure you see this. I got a little square ruler here and I'm going to put it on here to four inches and I'm going to cut this out at four inches, but I'm going to um, mark it with my pencils and I'm going to use my handy weight that I have here to hold to hold my um, my measurer here, and I don't know if this white will show. Let me grab a blue one. I have a blue, a blue chalk pencil, and I'm going to um, just draw out a line. Oops, I don't want this to move. I'm trying to keep everything straight. And I'm just going to um, throw out the line because this is, and I've got both of them layered together so I can cut them at the same time on this one. The batting one, I'll have to cut them out singly because they have batting in them. So I'm going to move over to this end. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to get it down to the four inch four inches, not three, four. And I want to make sure they're not lined up. So I'm going to put my weight on here very carefully not to move my, my square. And I'm going to draw a four inch square because this is what's going to box my bag. So if any of you don't know what boxing is, this is how you box it. These grocery totes are fairly simple. Um, they just require a liner and outside of the bag and handles. And the handles, I've already got my pieces cut for that as well. I have some leftover um, outside. And this outside fabric is um, like a duck fabric. So it's really heavy. It's almost like denim. So I have a few pieces left over and I thought I'd make those pieces for my handle. And then I just took some red because the red is going to be the bottom of the handles. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to fold these in half. So I'm going to try to just demonstrate to you real quick before I get ready to do them. I'm going to fold them in half and make a crease line um, in, in the center. And then I will take the sides and fold them into the center like this. And then I will fold it over so there's no raw edges. And it'll give me a nice little thin handle. And I want to attach my handles on the outside of my bag as well. And this red part will be the bottom part of the handles. And this duck fabric will be the top of the handle where you're going to carry the bag. So um, it'll make some really nice handles. But for now, I'm just going to get these corners cut out and um, we'll get to the handles later. So I'm going to make sure these are lined up. Fairly decent. And we're going to cut out corners. I got my good scissors here. And I'm wondering, maybe I should do these one at a time. Let's just do these one at a time. So I'm going to show you how I cut this out. So right on my blue line, we're going to cut this out. And I could save that for something if I want to. I don't know. I usually save everything. It's crazy. And right on the line. Oops, two threads there. Just get rid of them. And they should be about the same size. And they are. So let me just do the other one real quick. I was gonna layer them on top of one another, but I'm just like, oh, I want them to be very close and I don't want to mess it up. Now where's my ruler here? So back on here for the ruler and four inches. Well, that's not four inches. This is four inches, huh? Gotta make sure I get it right. I'm gonna put my weight on here 
and just um, pencil this out. And I've got my squares already cut on my, or ready to go on my batting. I've already made the line, so all I gotta do is cut those out. But um, I wanna get these out and we're gonna sew the outside of the bag together first. And then we're going to sew the liner together. And I'm going to take you over to my sewing machine and show you how I do this. So these are really, really nice bags. So there's that one. We got it. All right, so now I'm gonna put these away, ruler away. Okay, we're gonna take both the pieces of our outside of our bag and we're gonna put them pretty sides together. And I'm gonna line up my corners and I'm going to pin it. And we're gonna sew down each side of the bag and I'm gonna sew across the bottom here. So, um, and then I will go ahead and show you how to box the corners. So really, I really wanna get these corners lined up and I probably should have layered them together. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll make it work. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna put a pin to hold them together because I don't want things to move when I'm sewing. And pinning definitely helps. I know sometimes pinning is a pain in the butt. But when you're sewing, things tend to move. So, all right, they're pinned together and I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew each side. You can see this on this side and this side and across the bottom. And then we'll get to the boxing part. All right, getting ready to sew here. Um, I snuck a few extra pins in while you weren't looking. <laughs> And I'm getting ready to sew the sides down. So, and I'm just using the width of my presser foot. Uh, I'm not going to get technical with quarter inch seams here because I don't think it's necessary for a tote. And this is just a quick tote that I want to put together for my stepmom for her birthday. And I really wanted to bring you all on in this little journey and show you how easy it is to throw together a market bag or a grocery tote. And I'm just gonna flip to the other side. And my edges aren't even, and I'm really not gonna sweat it, how even my edges are, even though they don't quite make it because they'll get lost in the seam allowance. And as long as they're sewed together enough it's good enough for me. Put that pin out of there. Yeah, don't want to sew over pins. It's a great way to break a needle. Okay. And now I'm just going to sew across the bottom. And then we will box. And I'm not doing any back stitches because I'm gonna sew over that seam again anyway, so I don't really think it matters to, to back stitch. But you can if you want to. Okay. dandy pins out so I don't poke myself because poking yourself is no fun and I think I got them all okay so now I'm gonna bring you over here so you can kind of see and I do everything in my lap so um let's see if I can get this down I'm going to um get a hold of the corner here and I'm gonna fold it over and I'm going to make the seams meet. 
just gotta manipulate this a little bit. And I want to get them seams nested up together so they lay nice and flat. If you can see that. Um, I got them nested together and I want them to stay together so I'm probably gonna have to throw a pin in there. So I know I'm a little bit um, challenged at all of this so I'm gonna try to do my best to show you what I'm doing here and hopefully don't poke myself. So there, I've got the seam in there and I'm gonna throw a couple more pins in this and then we're gonna sew it across and make sure that it's not wrinkled up. So it's good to pin, even though it's a pain. And let's see if I can do this without poking myself and try to show you what I'm doing. It's not always the easiest. to be nice and lined up. I don't want it to be wonky. Okay, I got it pinned. So that's one side. So let's go back over here to the machine and hopefully you can see. I'll do this side for you and then I'm gonna do the other side off camera and I'll get the other, um, I'll get the liner box, but I just want you to see how I'm boxing this. So uh, now I'm just going to sew it across. And I want to make sure that they're even. Yeah, I think it's even. Get that pin out. And make sure everything's straight. Keeping everything straight, sometimes it's a and I don't want that fold or pinch to get in there either, so I have to be very careful. And I didn't backstitch, but I don't think I'll need to. This is gonna be the inside. So the other side, I'm just gonna go through this real quick. I was gonna do it off camera, but um, just to make sure you got this. I'm just lining up the seams. And I might be able to, I don't know if I should try this. <laughs> um, okay, maybe I can do this without pinning. Pinning is a very good thing. Worst case scenario, I'll have to tear out. I am going to backstitch this one. I should have done it on the other one. I might just go back over it again just to make sure it's secure. So my seams... On this, let me just make sure that they're nested up, and they are. I just want to get them aligned. Okay, I'm not going to sew this across. I will go back over the other one, and I'm going to I'm going to lock up the seams on it just to make sure that it's secure. And this, I want to make sure this is straight with no folds underneath. And um, I can show you how this bag looks when it's boxed. sewing this together and I wanted to sew the handles on the outside and I should have sewed the handles on before I sewed the shut but um maybe we'll do something different okay so um let's turn this right side out I think I'm getting way ahead of myself which sometimes I do but um I just want you to get the idea so now um, you can see when I turn it right side out, you can see that my seams line up in both um, the, the bottom and the sides here. So now we have the shape of a bag and the bottom, we have a nice wide bottom. So it's nice and wide to put groceries in and things. So I'm gonna get on to the liner 
and do the same thing with the liner. I'm going to sew up the sides and across the bottom, and then I'm gonna box it just like I did here. I just gotta cut out the corners on that. Um, and then um, we'll get onto the handles. I'll get, get you onto the handles and show you how to make the handles. Um, I'm gonna fold them and press them. And I wanted to sew them on the outside of the bag because I kind of wanted to X the handles on the outside and I want them to kind of flop down. I should have put the handles on before I sewed this, <laughs> this outside of the bag up, but I'm gonna improvise today because this is a quick gift. So I will get back with you. All right, I'm gonna go over and show you how I did the handles. I'm just gonna, I sewed the red piece to the middle piece here and I'm just gonna press the seams open just because it makes it less bulky. I'm gonna run it through my sewing machine because the duck fabric is kind of thick. Position your own around a little bit more so I don't hopefully be in the way of what I'm doing. And then you can see. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold this in half. I've already got one done and I've got it pinned on to my bag. And I'm, I'm a little slower at this than normal people, so just bear with me. I'm going to um, kind of get this folded so I can get me a middle line to fold everything in. And right now I'm just going to finger press it because it's kind of long and I don't, I'd have to measure this to show you how long I made them. I don't know. This is just a simple bag. I'm, I don't really have any measurements. I'm just kind of throwing this together. So I wanted to kind of show you. So um, I probably could measure this and let you know how long this is. Um, do I have a measuring tape handy? I do. Give me just one second. I'm gonna grab a measuring tape. I got a fabric one here. And I can tell you how long I've made my handles. So starting there. <laughs> I'm sure this is something to see. <laughs> this thing is all it's all rolled up. I don't usually use this, but it was handy, so I'm just gonna kind of see how long my handle is so you have a general idea. So um, it's about 38 inches, 38 inches, maybe 38 and a quarter, but 38 would be close enough. So just so you have the general idea of what I've got going on here. So my handles are 38 inches. Um, I just took some leftover and some pieces and I'm just kind of guesstimating on, you know, how long to make them because I'm just trying to throw this together as a quick project. They really are simple. And I just, a lot of times, I just uh, wing it and throw things together. So um, I'm getting this folded in half and pressed down the middle. And now I will come back in, open this up. And I have a press line, as you can see. And I'm going to, and this fabric, this duck fabric is really stiff and so isn't my red fabric. My red fabric is, I don't know, it's really different. It's not really soft like cotton, but um, it's kind of stiff. So it manipulates well for me. So I just want to get that half folded into the press line and then I'm going to take this half and have it meet. And I might have that over just a little bit too far. I think I do. So 
this takes a little a little bit of time to do this. But, um, you can kind of see, and then I will fold this in half again. And my my two colors will will line up the same. So I'm just going to finish pressing this and I'm going to stitch it down on both sides. But um oh, and another thing I want to show you on the end here, I fold this in like a half an inch because I don't want my raw edges to um, be showing because I'm going to attach my um, handles on the outside of my bag. So that's about a half an inch. So um, I will just press that and I'll do this on both ends. I will have like a little fold and then I will fold this in, the fold already folded, fold this side in, press it, and then I'm gonna fold it all in half again and I'm gonna stitch it and I'm gonna leave two inches on the end because I'm gonna stitch the end part on my bag which I'll show you on the one I've already got done so I'm gonna go ahead and get this um, pressed because it takes a little time and then we'll get to the next step all right I'm getting ready to sew my handles on the handles I measured three inches in and six inches down and I left a two inch um spot here where I didn't stitch it all the way down because I'm going to stitch it onto my bag and I hope all goes well. Um, I've got it pinned. So this is the first set of handles I'm going to put on and I've marked it with my colored pencil. I just want to back stitch to hold them but I want these to hold extra well and I kind of have to be really careful how I get this in here. Because I, what I really want to do is X these on the bottom so that the handles fall to the side of the bag is really what I want. And first I'm going to sew all the way around this side of the handle. And I pray that I get this right so I don't have to tear it out. <laughs> Nobody likes to tear out. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. So bear with me. So before I X this on in the bottom, I'm just going to stitch them on and then I'm going to check it. Um, after I do the other side, just to make sure everything is all good. So there's one that is stitched on to the outside of the bag, and I would like to do an X to really secure it if it all goes well. So I'm just going to stitch the other one on, and then I'm going to kind of take this off, and I'm going to look at it. And um, if, if everything looks good, I will X it on with my machine. I had to take my table off just so I could manipulate the... Um, this thing into my machine to get it on. I want to make sure that I get it on straight. So like I said, I measured in three inches to the inside. I'll keep my thread under there. And six, six inches down. So six inches down. I, I don't know if you can see my little blue line here, my little blue chalk line, but um, I wanted it to, so it should give me a nice amount of um, handle. Really, I'm just, you know, I'm just winging this bag. It's just a simple grocery tote. Nothing too technical or fancy. I just want it to be strong enough to carry groceries in. And my mom. And I don't want the bottom part of that hole to stick out the bottom. This is... I know I'm being fussy here, but I want it to look good. So, let's see. Put you on. So it comes up and meets that stitch line. Stitch line, I do a couple back stitches just to secure and I'll cut it. Now, okay. now um, 
I've got the two sides on, on my bag here. I don't know if you can see that. I've got it secured on. I really want to do an X. The side is secured on. So I'm just going to look this over. I think they're straight. And let me just look here real quick. Because what I want, I want my handles to fall to the side. I didn't want to put them in the seam because my bag that I made like this, um, I put my handles in the seam of my farm bag and I just repaired it because I pulled, I pulled, I pulled out one of the handles because I had some really heavy stuff in it and when I carried it in, um, it broke. So I like putting my handles on the outside of the bag because um, I can X them sew an X across and it gives it that extra security. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to put the ha handles on the other side of the bag off camera and because I don't want to make this video too long. This is just something simple. So if you're a sewer, you'll, you'll get it, you know, so, um, and then I'm going to drop the liner in and I did sew the liner. Um, I sewed the liner together just like I did the, the outside of the bag, except in the liner, I left a hole on, on the side here. So when I put my outside of the bag on the inside of my liner and it's gonna be right sides together. And then I'm gonna stitch it all the way around the top and then I'm gonna pull the whole thing through this hole and flip it right side out and then the liner will drop right into the outside of the bag. So I will show you this bag when I get it done, okay? <laughs> Just a quick show of how I um, put these handles on. I have marked three inches in, six inches down, and this is the second set of handles. So I'm just going to mark it up, up to that. I'm going to put it onto that marked line, and let's see, three inches in, so I can pretty much lay it over the top of the other handle, and pin it. in there okay and same way here I have this spot here marked and it can line up to the other outside of the handle and it looks about right right there so I'm gonna go ahead and pin it I'm gonna go ahead and sew these down, pop in the liner, and I'll show you the finished bag. Are you ready for the big reveal? <laughs> okay, uh, what I've done is I have placed the outside of the bag into the liner of my bag, and the pretty sides are to the pretty side. And I have sewed it all the way around and made sure I tuck my handles down in between the the liner and the outside of the bag. You don't want them to stick out or anything. So what I have here is this little hole on the side. I'm gonna show you how I pulled this out. And we should have a bag. So bear with me. I'm going to reveal my grocery tote. This is not anything fancy. Um, the stitching on the handles, nothing fancy. This is just gonna be for groceries and I want it to be secure enough to, to carry around. And I'm sure my mom's gonna keep this in her car and it's probably gonna get dirty and it's gonna get well used. So um, I don't wanna make anything too pretty. I just wanted to have the lining quilted and to give it some stability. And I might even want to find a piece of cardboard or something that I could put in the bottom of it just to keep it square. Um, a lot of people use like a piece of thin wood like plywood or paneling or something to cut to size for the bottom which just keeps, helps keep it um, have a shape. So you can see on the bottom of my bag here, this is the liner and I'm just poking out the corners. And I will poke out the corners there. And of course, um, what I'll wanna do is um, get the seam and pinch it together and um, uh, sew it closed. So, um, I should have used matching thread for like my handles. I use white thread because like I said, this is a grocery tote. I'm not gonna do anything fancy. And I'm just gonna take the liner now and push it down into the bag. 
and you can get to see what this is going to look like. So the batting actually really gives it some structure, so it should hold a nice shape. It went together perfectly, a nice when I sewed it all the way around. So now I just want to get it pushed into the corners. So I want to um, I gotta feel out the corners in here and get them kind of pushed. So it's nice and thick. This isn't as big as my bag that I have. Mine's a little bit bigger, but this is kind of like a grocery tote that you would get from Walmart or Wegmans or some of their little boxy type bags. So, as you can see, I've got a nice little bag here with handles. And when you fill it with groceries and things, it will be, uh, it'll stand up better. And if I had something to put in the bottom of it, it would help hold its shape because then the bottom won't sag. Um, mine, I think I, I did. I put a, um, a flexible foam in the bottom of mine and I, co I covered it with a matching liner um, just to kind of give it, but I think I might put like a piece of stiff cardboard in here, but this is really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close up that hole in the liner and I'm gonna top stitch it around and this will be a nice little grocery tote. Um, when my stepmom goes out to get her groceries or shopping. So I thank you for watching this video. If you watched it all the way through and you and liked it, enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a sweet little comment um, and please subscribe. I've got a graduation to get to, so I'm going to chat at you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.